through, um, all lecture related. I sent out an email last night and um, admittedly it was not a very good email because um, I won't even go into details why it wasn't a good email. I'm not sure if everybody realized that it was a uh, actual lecture, a last minute lecture that was announced for this Sunday, November the 8th. Um, we were invited by the Boston Mycology Club to join them. Um, for a lecture with, um, I'm sorry, Dr. Lynn Body on um, rotten trees, as she put it. She's a uh, mycologist who um, has like ba a background in fungal ecology, ex specifically centering on um, wood decay. So let me just ask real quick: Did you guys, has people seen that? Can you can unmute yourself and tell me, or do I need to send that email out again? Yes, um, I got uh, it. Worked good. Okay, fine. Yep, I'm registered. Yes, I Okay. I never get the emails. All right. Sorry, Marisol. I'll yeah. try, to, try to forward it to you, okay? Okay. If I don't, if I don't remind me, and I'll send it over to you, okay, email. All right. right. Marisol. This okay. Sunday? This Sunday, in, in the right. middle of the day. It's like at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay, so there, there's that one. And then um, we also have coming up in December, two, two of them in December that Tom Bigelow and I have been working on. One is on Friday, December 4th. Kathy Cripps, um, she's a mycologist. I, I forget where she's a mycologist at, somewhere, I think in, out west somewhere. Um, and the topic will be to be announced. Um, she specifically um, specializes in Arctic and Alpine fungi. So that should be interesting. What um, time? That'll be on Friday, December the 4th. Um, it should be at seven o'clock. Oh, okay, okay. He was a student of Orson Miller's. Yeah, she- Idaho. Okay. Yeah, she's she puts out a lot of papers. Anybody that spends a lot of time looking at mycology papers will see her name quite often. Um, so she does a lot of research. Kathy Cripps. And the following week, on Thursday, December the 10th, we made it on Thursday because Friday night's the first day of, um, um, I think, Passover. Um, it's a holiday on Friday night. I forget which one exactly. Um, so we had to make it on Thursday night. John Michelotti. How to Quit Your Job oh, yes. and Devote Your Life to Mushrooms, which was uh, inspired by Gary Linkoff, because Gary Linkoff used to tell everyone to do that, to quit their jobs and just do mushrooms. <laughs> so, um, yeah. John, John McLaughty will be uh, doing a lecture on that's Thursday, December 10th. Okay, so there's the, uh, the announcements that I have. Any, any other announcements? Anybody need to chime anything in? Okay. So anyway, tonight is our normal Taxonomy Tuesday. It's like a show and tell. So we um, will take turns sharing our screens and, you know, spending either about 10 minutes or, you know, five, six mushrooms, something like that, trying to share the time with everyone. There's 20 people here tonight um, showing off what we have found over the past week or two, um, giving us an ID, telling us why it is that, or requesting an ID, and we'll do our best we can. Um, you guys can email me if you need to. And we do have a queue going. A few people have already um, put into the, uh, the group chat that they have stuff to share. So uh, we'll get started on that. And if um, people could help out and type in the names into the um, chat function, that would be awesome. So everyone can uh, get a visual on the name as well. So, um, so please put your names in the chat so I can get kind of a running list here so we can go right down the line. Virginia is first. So Virginia, would you like to take it away? Share screen. Um, I had these on my screen before, but I don't know if this is these. I had it all on my. Oh, never mind. I see where it is. Okay, now do you see it? Not yet. Did you hit the it, share screen? Um, I did the share screen. Okay, try it again. The green button. I'll have to go back and see if I can find it. Um, let's see. Share screen. I share. I do, but then I get. I don't get my the screen that I had. So usually when you hit share screen, you get another window and you have to pick the screen you want to share. Um, share. 
from our desktop. And then share again, I find. Is it there? Is it there? Can you see it? No. No? Pretty no. not, Virginia. Well, I, had, I seem to have a problem with trying to get it. I had, I had my pictures right on my screen. Look on the top of your window, and it, it might show you uh, to have to confirm that you want to share your screen. Try that. I have to, it's, it wants me to open security and privacy. Mm. I don't know, that'll take a while probably. You better go to somebody else. <laughs> okay, if you'd like, um, Virginia, please feel free to email your pictures to me and I'll share them for you. And okay. Within a, you know, a little while. Okay, so we're gonna um, go to Mike and Lauren. Hey, I didn't think you were gonna get to me this quickly. All right. Oh, no, I go in order that people sign up. So <laughs> <laughs> try to be fair, first come first serve, right? <laughs> So I have an idea on this, but um, this was my first time finding these um, last week and they were just super neat to see. Um, um, is it uh, gumphidious glutinosis or something like that? Does that sound right? Is that the only picture you have? Yeah, we want, there we go. We want to see that part. These are amazing. Is that? Um, does that sound right to you, Gumphidius? Mm. Yeah, well, I don't. Did it have pores in it underneath that veil? It looks no, there were gills, and that that veil was like um, I don't know what you call it. It was like um, um is that a is that a court a quartenarius? No, uh, it's it's Willis Ludius probably. Yeah. Was oh. it pine, pine trees? Yeah. Well, yeah. there, it was like actually, um, I mean, I know for sure there were spruce there. I think it was a mix. Was it mixed, Mike? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because I thought iNaturalist said gumphidious glutinosis or something. Yeah, you, you need to, to scrape away some of that partial veil and see if you've got gills or. or um, it's um, definitely gills. It's gills. Yeah. Oh, it's gills. It's definitely gills. Oh, it is gills. Well, then I'm wrong. Yeah. It's gonfidius. Yeah. Uh, Subrosius? Yeah, good, good, probably. Yeah, yeah. He said glutinosus, nos roseus. Oh, glutinosus, subrosius. Yeah, what, one of those. Oh, I okay. I how to tell the difference. Okay, I wrote the name both. Yeah, right. yeah, it's not, if Suillus would have pores. Boy, that really looks like Suillus Lydia's. Uh, we found that at, uh, um, at uh, Stokes this, this summer. We did. I, I took it home and I, yeah. I analyzed it a little further. Got spores and everything. Uh -huh. Yeah, but but it was but the but 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 what we knew there were gills. Right. Yeah. So, boy, this really looks like Swillus luteus, you know, with with the intact uh, partial veil. Yep. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If it's got gills, it's it's got. What do you call that? Um that like um that veil but it's like not like a normal veil it's like it was like um i don't want to say slimy because it wasn't super slimy it was just like wet Mucosas? it was like what was that mucosus i can't say it right mucosus <laughs> you're saying mucosus yeah yeah i'm trying to say that okay Let's see. Oh, these I found at Stokes last week, and and I don't know what these are. Like Loma, isn't it? It looks like that. Mira and John, it's got the nuts experts. Gills. <laughs> yeah, looks like Loma. I'll write the name. Yeah, it's like Loma. These were, um, if you guys know, like uh, where we had our foray, um, basically right where you enter mm -hmm. um, from the parking lot. Um, you know, you go over that little bridge and you're kind of near the picnic area. That's where these were. 
Did they have a smell? Um, I feel like I smelled them and I can't remember, I can't remember anything super distinctive. Yeah, I, they are triple almond, I don't know what they are. They were, there were a lot of them, um, yeah. Were they definitely on the ground or could they have been on wood? I think that they were on the ground. Mm -hmm. okay. Do you have a, do you have a shot of the cap of the one in that, in that condition? That the, the ones next to it that we see the cap for look immature or less mature than this one. Oh, um, yeah, I don't think I have another shot of the, the top of the cap other than this. Yeah. So that one's still kind of sort of. Yeah. This is the time when we find a lot of trichomas. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see. Oh, these little things. What the heck? <laughs> also at Stokes, they were really tiny, growing from um, a stump. And they were, yeah, they were weird. Um, Do you have more photos? Let's see. It was, they were so small, they were hard to get shots of. Hmm. Hmm. Cute. They were like, like mini chanterelles, <laughs> but not. Maybe, maybe, maybe some, maybe some sort of trichomopsis. Maybe oh, that, that's a wild guess, really. They trichomopsis grows on wood. Fall, fall, fall stuff. Okay, yeah, there were probably like four of these on this, like very, very dead stump. All right. Um, I wrote the name. Okay. These I just found a couple of hours ago. Uh, Mycena pura. Okay. No, maybe not. Maybe not. In the, on the ground? Yeah, there were about four of them. They were uh, growing from leaf litter. Mm -hmm. Did, Did they you gather? Be Mycena? Did you happen to smell them? Uh, no, I have them though. I could smell them. What oh, should I look for? Beautiful. Uh, they smell like radishes if it's Mycena pura, but if you've had them a day, if you but just picked them today, they might still smell. Um, yeah, I still have them. <laughs> but I agree, it looks like Mycena pura. Uh, Does Mycena always grow from wood? No, no, this one grows on the ground. Okay. Many grow on wood, but this one doesn't. Yeah, forest litter usually for these. Ground, the ground covered with forest litter, leaves, needles, whatever. Oh, Mike says it does smell like radish. And I thought these little, like, um, I don't know what you call is that hyphae? Mycelium? Or uh, what do you call it? Yeah, it's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cute. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, that, that, um, that the, the base of the stock here would possibly be called strigos in, in a manual with the, uh, with the little hairs coming out perpendicular to the, uh, the base. Um, so, so you might, you might see if, see if that word is used, but, but yeah, I, I agree with everybody else. My Cena Pura. So. Oh, cool. Okay. Thanks. Um, I was surprised. These were from um, a location about five minutes from my house. I was surprised to see so much super colorful stuff still coming up. Like there were a lot of these. Some of these were old, like you see, and some of them were really tiny, like just starting. But they were big. Those were like those were like several inches across. I meant to say igrophorus. No igrosive, igrophorus. I mean that family, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
they sure. that oh yeah okay hygrophorus i'm sorry i wrote the wrong thing look at the gills there's something like intervene and yeah oh, i'm sorry i'm trying to talk and i'm muted hygrocybe i would say hygrophorus is more robust thick fleshed these oh, like, oh, okay. yeah, thin fleshed reddish red ones are usually like hygrocybe i wrote both There's names a few different of these red hygrocybe species i'm i don't really want to take a guess on the species but but it's but it, that's a hygrocybe hygrocybe uh, okay i'm probably saying it the wrong way yeah we we pronounce it the other way but that's good no, hygrocybe is probably right. I'm, I, you know, for 30 years ago, I thought I learned how to say all these words and I learned like the wrong way on most of them. So it just <laughs> lingers. <laughs> have you, Dave, have you ever seen um, them so big? Like, I, I uh, this is my first time seeing them so big. How big? How, what do you mean by big? How big were those caps? They were like three to four inches. Yeah, it's pretty big, um, but but you know, but if if conditions are right, um, you know, mushrooms will be bigger than than they should be. Um, but but the, that's some sort of hygrosophy. We 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 saw some big hygrosophies this past weekend at Bell's Mill uh, Bell Plain, the foray over the weekend. They were easily four or five inches tall, and you know, two three inches across. Now, uh, Luke, why is that? Is that, um, does that have to do with the season? Is it because the bugs aren't getting to them or what's the deal with that? Well, just like what Dave was just saying, the conditions must have just been good for it. Yeah. Ava available moisture. Right? There, there must have been a sufficient rainfall with, you know, yeah. maybe three to five days before they came up, something like that, or two to five days before they came up. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, that's it for me. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Marisol. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so I went to uh, the Pine Barrens on Saturday, and I found a sort of cool stuff. Common ones and special ones and regular ones like i found two types of colivia it's um, a very tiny mushroom and um it has a, a special quality that they it, they revive i forgot the right term for that they revive when you water them again so these ones were growing on a rotten mushroom. You can see the black in there is the rotten mushroom, which I could not identify, but there were lacarias around it. And here is the mushrooms, and they didn't have an sclerotia, which means a base to grow from. So the ones without the sclerotia are called uh, Colivia uh, cirrata. Oh, I'll write the name. Oh, I can't. I got it. It's right there. Yeah, it's on top. Olivia Sirata, piggyback, whatever name, I can't see it. All right. So they're pretty cool. It's always a bunch of them, and they're so tiny. All right, you can see the rotten mushroom there. All right. And then... Um, I, I'll show you the other one when I get there. Uh, this is not the right name. It says Feblios, Flebiosis Grasa, but it's not. I can identify it. It was gorgeous. I never, uh, if somebody proposed another name, um, I can't remember the other name, but the micro doesn't correspond. And the micro doesn't correspond to Febliopsis Grasa either. So I'm, I'm puzzled with this one. I'll show you another photo. Oh, it has an edge, very thin. So it's the, when it's like this, you don't call it a cap. It's, the, it's like an, an edge, I don't know the right name. And there yeah, are more here. Um, this is insect scat. 
you can notice uh, the words it's really worthy and i got another photo that was oh no i didn't put the a better a better photo eh, i don't have it there All right so i'm still working on that one trying to identify it not for the opposite crossing. no it no the i know the micro for that one and it doesn't it didn't show it but, but i had to make another test for that one okay so I found something interesting. Um, it's a lichen. I thought it was an ascomycete first because when I look with the lens in the site, it was full of black plates like here. But then later, I didn't pay more attention until later at home when I look at the microscope and it has this green algae. No, 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 I'm sorry, no green algae a kind of a lichen growing on the black thing is attached to the green stuff that looks like some kind of foliage and also you can notice these black veins that are like entering on the surface of the pebble it was a pebble it was so pretty and it was in the center as you see it that's how it was it was surrounded by like four or five kinds of um lichens yeah, Cladonia, Cladonia with the red, Cladonia with the brown, and the little elf caps it was pretty. And somebody gave me two names, and one seems to match, but I am now 100%. Leimonis erratica. Let's see if this picture, yeah, same thing. Same thing, you can see the black plates with the little arachnoid veins in there, and the green. The, the pebble is like an inch big. It was really pretty. <clears throat> Biodiversity in that two square inches is pretty amazing. See, I was, I was in a pile of wood that is um, near a water hole in the Pine Barrens, and I found a million things in there. It was incredible. There are oaks and pine trees. So this one is called Estereum gausapatum. It's one of the bleeding stereum, stereum. So you, I heard that I squeeze it, and then you wait like one minute, and immediately it shows that red, so I touch it with my finger so you could see it. Oh, and another thing is um, there was a, a burn. I can't say that word, a burn in these woods so my thing i tried to clean my finger and every i touch a lot of wood that was burned so you can see right there and you can even see burn in this wood it was a, an oak and the cap is oh, more of the same and the cap is yellowish like it looks like a stereo if sutun or complicate on one of the other, but they don't bruise. This one does bruise and grows on oak. Oh, I found this beautiful um, jelly, toothed jelly fungus, and Alan Rockefeller, he's an expert in mushrooms. He told me that pseudoidnum gelatinosum is not the American name for this, but that's an European name. And they are working on the DNA too. And eventually we'll have a new name for our species. I, I submitted some of these to Elsa Vilenga mm. at Berkeley a few years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I find that, find that on hemlock around here. And I haven't heard any any sort of results yet um but pseudo hiding them yeah you know i did too yeah and this one i found two uh, in two different spots um, this one was kind of brownish i don't know if it was a little older but i also found it clear i'll show you the clear one and mm -hmm. they grow only on pine wood i mean on pine they, don't yeah. pine. they hang it around for a long different time than what i find on hemlock Ah, I mean, I mean, oh, conifers, I'm so sorry, oh, conifers, okay. Yeah, but I, I find on hemlock. 
Yeah, I don't have that wood here. We have tons of pine trees, doesn't it? Pine, right, in the pine yeah. barrens. There's no hemlock. In the pine barrens, yeah. Look at how gorgeous this thing was. Like, oh my gosh. Looks just uh, like what I find. Oh, gorgeous. Look at that. And, and, um, and this one it wasn't, has this color. It was lighter. Oh, look at the, the surface. Oh, I see. It has some kind of fibers sticking up. All right. So it's our American version of hidden pseudo hidden gelatinosum, waiting for a new name. And I want to show the cirrata, the one, the little ones with the, where is it? Oh, it's right here. So this one has the um, sclerotia and it's red right here, right here. Nine between nine and five. Thank you, and I hope you have a great day. <laughs> um, so here you see the Escherichia from where they grow. Yeah, I could only I only saw this one. There were two, right there. And maybe there is a, a red. Uh, pardon, there is a dead mushroom here too because it's kind of black and rotten there. And um, another one that was interesting. Oh yes, this one is so beautiful. It was on pine wood. They they threw some gigantic pines and oaks logs to stop people from going to destroying the the habitat with their uh, tricycles. So this one is called Gymnopus spongiosus. Uh, it has it was really wet, so you cannot appreciate too good the fibers or mycelium or hair that is at the base. It's really wet. Oh, I see a little friend in there. All right, and another photo. I tried to take this is the top. So the striations there, and I have a photo of the oh more. I was trying to get the gills and one of the root. I mean, no root, so forgive me, the base. Oh, you can see better here. Okay, yeah, much better here. All right. How much time do I have? Probably as much time as you want. <laughs> oh, okay. I think Dave and myself are the only ones that have any, or oh, one here, I think, in right. Virginia. Okay, in Virginia. Okay, let me see what else can I show you. Mm. Oh my goodness. They're, oh, this is beautiful. Okay, so this is another stereum that doesn't bleed, and it loves to grow in little sticks. So, stereon ocraseo flavum. Flavum means yellow, I think. Am I right? Yes. Yeah, okay. So, look at how gorgeous this thing is. Because it rained a lot, so it was really soft and, and fresh. And, and the, the cap is very hairy, in suit, whitish. I don't know if it, because it is wet, it reflects the colors from the other side, but it's usually white. Oh, it, I see some little color in there. Okay. The and yellow side, is that the under underside aerosol or the This cap? is the, the fertile surface, the hymenium. Okay. And this is the cap. It's, yeah. I have another photo to show you. And the background is um sphagnum squarosum. It's a pit moss type of moss that we grow growing there. So I turned them over so you could see them. The caps. They're really tiny. This was like super tiny stick. And it was oak burnt oak. So you can yeah, see how Mark, now remember that that uh, when we, we noticed that after they'd done burns, so we always see an awful lot of this. Stuff. Yes. Oh, there was so much of it. Yep. It's beautiful. Yep. All right. And oh my goodness, there were so many lacarias. It was incredible. 
There were probably thousands of them. So I have a photo. I call them La Caria Proxima, but I am now 100% that they are that. Oh, I'll come back to that. Uh, let's do that one and then one more. Uh, I don't have more photos. They were growing in plain sand. They were occupying the whole road to go to this, um, to this blue hole. I was like afraid of walking because there was, there were everywhere, hundreds and hundreds. And I was thinking that the color was so intense. And I thought that maybe the cold weather does that, concentrates the pigments and makes it deeper, richer in the color. The, the stack is really um, short. And I, I got one more that is interesting. It grows in, in the bugs too. It's called, oh, and it's funny because the name is called Bug, Bodhya Uda. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I found it. Okay, so because it rains so much before, the little, there are some kind of cavities in the side of the road and they were full with water. This happens all the time water and then they dry, but there's always like moss in there. So they were. Um, they have a striation, they have a nice margin here. Yeah. Let's see if I can make it bigger, yes, right there. And there was plenty of them. Okay, you can see that they have darker um, uh, spores. The gills are kind of tan and then the spores are brownish. You can see how it darkens here. Yeah, a few, uh, Marcel, a few years ago, remember, we, we yep. actually collected them underwater. You could see them growing under the water. Oh, my gosh. In, in, in Brendan's bird? Uh, no, uh, Frank oh. Park. Ah, oh, okay. That, I, some of these were under the water. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, these ones are like a little submerged, too. They're beautiful. We gotta let them dry out before we can take a spore print. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. All right. I think, they, I think they used to be a sapphire or something. I don't know. They've changed it, and then for a while it was put in psilocybin. Then we've been putting it all over the place. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Hmm. Very cool. Thank you, Marcel. Right. You're so welcome. Okay. So Virginia, I sent you a message about your email. If you're on here, I'm going to check the chat. Okay. Um, so I'm going to Dave. You ready, Dave? Dave. I think Dave fell asleep. No, no. I can't tell if he's frozen or if he's asleep. I think he's frozen. I hope he's frozen. He looks asleep. <laughs> <laughs> you there, Dave? Wake up, Dave. I'm mute. Hey, he's mute, boy. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. Sorry, drifting off. I'm back. <laughs> Long day. You ready to go? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. All right. So I'll just start right here at the top. So I made two, posted two observations on Mushroom Observer of the same bunch of mushrooms of several days apart. Um, uh, they appear to be white spored mushroom, but I can't get any spores out of them. Um, I did crush some um, um, gill material and possibly found, you know, just very, very few spores. Um, but, I, but I don't know the color of the spores. I found a few Bassidia, very, very few. Um, they look sort of like um, flamulina, but they're not slimy. They're not sticky. 
Um, and they run hemlock and flamulina is pre primarily a hardwood uh, species. Hmm. So they're on this uh, mossy hemlock log and, they, and it is a hemlock log. I went back uh, for a second time and checked. There's another, another um, observation of these same things. Um, so I don't know what they are. You know, I, somebody said maybe flamulina. Somebody said um, gym, gymnopolis, but but I, I don't think so. They're, they're not they're not gymnopolis. So there's um, a basidium. You can see it, it's a little hard to see here, but there's a couple of um, stergmata, the little horns pointing out of the. Um, Basidium where the spores were attached, but I can't find many spores. I, I I may have found a few spores, but I'm not really sure. I mean, I bring home a lot of mushrooms. It's not out of the question, you know. A spore falls um, onto a mushroom, you know, where it doesn't belong. That looks like a a cystidium there, that little thing. And you know, I you know, I thought I I thought I had remembered that I was looking at the edge of the gill or, or the face I'm not and I'm not sure now I forget so I should have written it down at the time but that little thing looks like some sort of cystidium some sort of hymenial cystidium so I don't I don't know what these are there were a whole bunch of them on this hemlock log um, I don't think they're cladocibula um, I don't think they're a dark spored mushroom. That thing right there might be a might be a spore. It probably is a spore. I don't know, but it may have, you know, it may have come from some other mushroom. It's it's really hard hard for me to say that that's not what happened because I take home a lot of mushrooms. So there they are. Mm, they, These, yeah. In that book, Rogers, I have seen mushrooms with that long spike. Maybe you want to check the book. I can't remember the name. Some colleague. Oh, Phillips, Roger Phillips. Or maybe it's Phillips. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe I'll look through Phillips. Right. I have Phillips, or I'll look through Phillips. Mm -hmm. I'll look through. Yeah, this type is really long. In son of yeah, that. they're they're pretty long. Mm -hmm. On wood, they're all right on the wood. Mm -hmm. um, Trichomopsis, I thought, but they don't really look like any trichomopsis. No, right? Trichomopsis usually is. They don't form big groups or clusters. There's usually just like one, two, three, four of them. And and no smooth either. Yeah, trichomopsis mm -hmm. this usually has ornamentation on the cap. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, yeah, so I, I just don't know what these are. I dried a bunch of them. You know, I've got a nice sample here. If any, you know, if anybody's interested. Um, yeah, so I so. You know, I don't know what they are. <laughs> Flamulina is would be my best guess, but can I see this one? There's the same one, right? Same thing, like before the two inch rainfall. We had two inches of rain, and there were still some of these around. So this is when they were a little fresher. I don't think any new ones came out. I think it was really the same ones were still on the lot because there were a whole bunch of them. Okay. Yeah. But flamulina has the velvety stipe. Yeah, usually the bottom of the stipe, uh, well, flamulina velutipes at least, it, it has I mean, yeah, um, a velvety yeah. um, stipe base, right? So I don't know. I don't know what these are. Mm -hmm. I really don't know. Um, pretty interesting. I, I think they're probably white spored. Because even after the two inch rainfall, when they presumably were, were pretty mature, you would expect the gills to darken a little bit, but there were hardly any spores. Like I only found like two Bassidia, you know, after scoping a fair amount of gill material. Um, so, so maybe the gills didn't turn darker because there were no spores to turn them darker. I know, it's hard to say. Hmm. All right. yeah, that's a tricky one. Uh, maybe I'll, you know what? I have a, 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 um, an offer from Stephen Russell at Purdue to have stuff sequenced. And if the offer still stands, I'll, I'll send some of that in. Um, 
Yeah, what else do we have here? So I thought this was a satharella. It was growing in like spread um, mulch chips. So DCNR, Department of Conservation and Natural Resources, Natural Resources, they, in Pennsylvania, they sometimes uh, put out these little piles of mulch and chips rolled up in this like mesh to prevent um, erosion. And so there was a bluet in this stuff also. And this, this thing was in there. And I thought, oh, it looks like that springtime satharella um, subvernalis. Um, but then I looked at the spores. And the spores, if you can do a zoom on uh, enlargement on these, the, the spores, they, they look like coprinella spores. They have this like, um, uh, what's, the, what's the word? Okay. Uh, my, like a miter, right? Miter. Wait, um, okay, edge, tip. You well, there's that? a big pore. There's a great big pore on the end. Oh. Oh. And then the shape is, um, uh, what my it comes from the word miter like the a miter is what a bishop wears oh. you know but it's got that miter shape i forget it's an adjective formed out of the word miter i was gonna so, say they look like pine nuts <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> they don't look like satharella spores to me though from you know satharella spores that i've looked at Usually you don't have the big poor that, that, so I don't know, this is kind of kind of mysterious to me also. I, I, I didn't preserve this. I only got one of them. There was only one of them there. Um, and I don't, I don't even know what the heck this thing is. It, is it a cystidium or some sort of like terminal hyphae or something? I'm not even sure. Um, but, but, um, I don't know. That seemed kind of interesting. I don't know what it is. <laughs> so no one has come up with that. I just posted hey, these by a few hours ago. Yeah. Dave? Yeah. There's a name for uh, looking like a... Uh, looking like a mitre. Mitral. Like the mitral valve. Like, uh, oh, like a mitra from the... From the mitra from the church. yes. Like the mitra, like the mitral valve. Oh, mitra. Yeah, there's, okay. you know what, I, you know what, Luke, I put the word on here and I forget it now. Oh, it's, it's in the notes. I put it's it in, in the notes. Spanish. Oh, okay. uh, mitriform, mitriform. Yeah, there That's it is. Oh my gosh. Yeah, mitriform. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> there it is. See that it, right there. it was right, right. there. <laughs> you tried to say that before and I could never understand what you were saying. It's a mitra. Oh. Okay, now I get it. Okay. Yeah, it looks like a bishop's mitre. And a, a lot of co coprinella spores look like that. So I looked around on Champignon du Quebec. They have a bunch of coprinella species, but I couldn't find anything that looked like these. So, so once again, I, another stumper. I don't know what it is. Satharella say. Satharella say. You know, that's Satharellaceae. <laughs> Satharellaceae, right? Yeah, yeah. Too many syllables for me, right? <laughs> yeah, really. There you go. <laughs> okay. All right. So this is probably just Neophavilus. Um, uh, what's the usual Neophavilus? Oh wait, you're on the Fomentarius. Oh. Uh, okay. Yeah. The, so okay. So this was on. This was on what I think is basswood. I can't really, couldn't really tell because the leaves are all shed now. So, so I just saw the, uh, I don't think it's oak. I don't think it's um, beech or birch. Um, but so, okay. So these look like the usual sort of fums, fomentarius sort of thing, right? Um, maybe the color is a little bit different, but fums, fomentarius from all what I can gather, um, KOH turns red on fums, fomentarius, or fummies, fomentarius. 
And you can see there's like most of it is tubes. You know, most of it is just old tubes. That's a fum, fummies, fomentarius kind of thing. But but the KOH went black pretty quickly too, black on the context and the pores. So that's got me wondering a little bit, you know. And this is strong KOH, it's like 10%. So there's the tree with the mushroom with the uh, polypores on it. So I don't know. I can't find any other reasonable proposal for the ID be, beyond. I mean, there's these um, felinus things that stain, you know, that turn black, but that doesn't look like felinus. Yeah, it, it has that foamy, like right in there. Like just yeah, that it's hoof, got that, that foamy shape. That yeah, thing. you know, that hoof shape. Why do not? Why don't you think it's foamy's fomenteris? Because KOH turned black on the pores and the the um, context. Oh. Okay. But you know what? There's only a few sources that say that the KOH should turn red. Most sources don't say anything. So I'm wondering if perhaps the KOH reaction is ambiguous on this species. And maybe most sources just don't feel like saying anything, but I can't find any information to that effect. So that's why I'm wondering about this one. But do they change a like, little bit with age? Because these look they, young to me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, maybe maybe that changes with age. Yeah, these look pretty young. Yeah, they look pretty young, like they just came out within the last couple months. So um, yeah, that that could be it. That's that's a good idea. Um, well, I've got I still have some here. I I I set it out in the you know remote hope you know that a few spores will fall um, because I think Fummy's Fomentarius has like really big spores. I I think I remember just reading that because because I just checked around on this on that species you know to try to get see if this matched but i'll let it sit out there for a week and maybe a couple of spores will fall and maybe i can find them um, under the microscope but yeah i thought it was pretty interesting it looks like foamy's foam tires is a pretty good uh possibility i can't find anything else that looks like this it's on a kind of tree that would be sort of non-standard usually you find foamy's Fomentarius. Now there is this other one, Fomis excavatus, but that I think that's just like the new name for Fomis fomentarius in, in North America. The same thing. Same thing. That's that's what I thought, right? Um, so hopefully I get a few spores to fall out of this, and maybe you know, maybe we can nail it then. But um, I got you know I'm going to keep the piece of it that I have here. I'll just let it sit around and until it dries out completely in case anybody ever wants to study it. I don't have much luck finding spores and stuff like that um, on, you know, but it's just like digging around and mounting stuff on these polypores. A lot of times I don't find anything. But yeah. if anybody thinks they know what to do with this, I can send it to them. <laughs> yeah, it seems like par for the course trying to get spores out of a polypore. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you get lucky and a few fall. So this one was interesting. Yeah. Yeah, usually these come out in spring. And sometimes, now maybe this is an old one that revived. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know if the species does that. Or... Um, but Neophavilus uh, alveolaris, you'll see it comes out, you'll see it starting to come out when you look for morels, you know, and then you'll see it later on, it's still there. And, um, but this one looked pretty fresh, but not only does it look pretty fresh, it's pretty, pretty pale also. Um, so so I, it's very, very pale. There's no orange in it at all. Dave. That yeah. happens all the time. They fade very quickly. They start yeah. orange and then they fade. Yeah, you can I was still wondering. You see traces if... of the color of the cap. 
this one also has very few scales. Yeah, so I can, um, a suggestion in there too, Neophevelus Americanus. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, well, thanks, Luke. In the, I'll in the, check that out. In the sport, and the spores actually do match that. I didn't have time to look at the spores for alveolar areas. I forget what they yeah. are. Yeah, the, 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 this is right in the middle of the range. And I only looked at a few of them when I said, okay, it looks like this is the raw sort of gross range. And I had a good discussion recently online with Rick Kerrigan about um, recording spore measurements. And at least in his Agaragas book, his ranges that he gives on spore measurements, um, the ones that are not in parentheses are mean means of length cross width. And so a lot of times what I'll just do is I'll just look at spores under the scope and say, okay, there's the biggest one, there's the smallest one, you know, and I'll make, I'll just make a, a gross range for length and cross it with a gross range on width. Because quite frankly, I don't have time to do all this compute the mean stuff forever because I bring home a lot of stuff. I like to look at a lot of stuff. I just don't have time to do that with everything. Um, but there's an agaricus that I just had a good discussion with Rick about, and I forgot to to um uh, to send you that one, Luke. Um, and I may have showed it last week. I don't think I did. I forget. But we had a nice discussion about that. And um, but anyway, back to this one. Yeah. So, but you know what? The I looked at the spores on this, and the lengths and the widths didn't vary a whole lot. It looked like to me. So a gross sort of range of lengths cross range of, of widths is probably not far off from what you what I would get with computing a means anyway. They, Look, yeah. They, ahead, so. They're asking people if they find um, a little different looking neofavolos alveolaris to save them because they are going to work on the DNA from collection oh. from different areas. Oh, okay, good, because it's still here. I have it. It's on the table. I'll save it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I'll so, bag it up and I'll save it. Yeah, so, it, just, it just dried out right on the table here. So, Yeah, looking at this on the uh, computer, you can see there there is some orange in there. A little yeah. bit, and little. it's not very scaly, though. What was the so, date I put on this one? Because I think this was before the, before the rain came. Um... I forget if I got this before or after the rain. I think that's before, oh, the 31st? No, nah, that, was, that was after the rain. So, you know, it may have been orange and scaly and the rain may have washed it. Yeah, maybe. May have washed it so, out. That name that I put in there, I pulled this paper up. Uh-huh. Um, that's what, if you guys can see. That's, yeah, yeah. That's the new Fabulous Americanus. And that's... Uh -huh. And that's being described from this area, from the northeast. Right. So. I'll check that out. Thanks. Yeah, yeah that's, yeah, that's, um, and it, they look pretty fresh, too. This one looked pretty fresh, too, like it just came out. No, it didn't look like one that was, like, months old and revived. They pretty much don't come out in the summer, as far as I can tell. They're, they're sort of a chilly weather mushroom. Hmm. Who is the author of the paper? Um, Jing, Zhao, and Kui. Okay, so they're all Chinese. <laughs> they're all Chinese, but these are American. Um, these specimens, USA, Connecticut, New Haven, Connecticut. Dave. Okay, so that's Coleman. Yeah, what's up, Marcel? Yes, I've never heard that Neolfabolus alveolaris revives. And what yeah, I, I never heard that either. I'm, oh, I'm just never. kind of guessing. And they but I, but I find it months old. You know, I find really old ones. Okay, and what I, in my experience, I I find them, them pardon, I find them, ugh, I find them many times, many of them, and they don't last too long because bugs love them. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't mind. I yeah. find them in, the, in like midsummer. And it's clear they were out for like a long time because they're kind of old and dried up. See, uh, yeah, and, and faded too. I mean, you can Sometimes see Sometimes faded, 
a lot of times not. A lot of times they're still orange when I find them. Okay. So anyway, that's that's a. I'll look that up, Luke. That sounds interesting. I'll, I'll, send you this I'll paper save if you it. Want it. I will save this. I'll bag it up All right. and label it. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing for a second. Um, so I can open up iNaturalist. Virginia, are you still there? I'm still. Okay, because I got your email, but I couldn't open it up, unfortunately. The uh, uh, What's that? I did get your email, but unfortunately, I couldn't open it up. The attachment... I know, you said that. Uh, I'll have to wait till next week, probably, because I can't do anything with the pictures right now. They're on my other computer, oh, and okay. uh, I can't put them on... I don't want to put them on iNaturalist, because these are uh, done in a moist chamber, uh, so they're not like... Uh, not wild, sure wild. <laughs> So I, not wild exactly. They were I, I got litter. I picked up litter, leaf litter, but and, but so I'll just have to wait till next week and see if I can figure out a way to put them on my screen. All right, cool. You know, on iNaturalist, there is a uh, button on there where you can say that you did that. Uh, I I emailed somebody who has a slime mold um, program, but. Um, I never really got a clear answer of whether I could do that or not. So, <laughs> okay. All right. So I have a couple here from okay. the week from the weekend from um, Bell Plain. We are foray down at Bell Plain, way down in Cape May County. So somebody did find the sporassus. It was kind of cool because we don't really see them too much in the uh, this time of the year. Or at least, at least I, I don't normally see them this time of the year. Now, I called this um, Sparasis Americana. Now, iNaturalist doesn't even have that name in there. Um, but I was looking in the Tim Baroni book, and he was saying the, um, the other one, Spatulata, I think it's called, that should be really zony. In his pictures, they're really clear zones. He said if they're not zony, it's Sparasis Americana. That's what Tim Baroni said. And I did try to eat this, but unfortunately, like most things from the Pine Barrens growing on the ground, it was so full of sand, I couldn't really tolerate it. <laughs> I found it last year in Belle Plain. Did you? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And at the base of an oak, not too far from the picnic tables in the park. Okay. How big a cross was that? Luke? It was about four to five inches. And it was in pretty nice shape too. Yeah, it looked good. Yeah, it was nice. It was just, it was just really sandy. Sometimes that stuff that's really dirty or sandy like that. Sometimes if you blast it with a hose, you you can clean it up. Um, yeah, I think Sparasis might be able to stand up to that. Mm, okay. All right. So I found this polypore down there. It was at the base of a white pine. And I wasn't, I couldn't make up my mind whether it was a uh, Phalia schwannitzii or if it was an Onia, formerly known as Ionotus tomatosis. So that was a top. I don't think it's Phalus, but if it is, it's old. Well, it was really small. And, and the uh, pores are. Yeah, that's, that's definitely the tomatosis. Okay. Me, me and you were. Igor were going back and forth about it. He did point out a point in one of the guidebooks, one of the, um, I guess it was one of the Beset books that they were saying that the onions are supposed to be pretty thin, where this one actually was like thick and. No, they vary quite a lot. But if, if that was a faolus, there would be much more of a yellow green pore surface. Okay. I, I thought so too. I, I wasn't convinced at all, but. Look, but the yeah. habitat, they both grow in the same habitat. Sure. Or can. And look how wooly this is. I know yeah, that. But they, yeah, but they both vary a lot like that. Okay. Some are smooth. Some It depends on how much rain and conditions of your weather. Okay. So you think Onia tomentosis. Yeah. Okay. Look. Maricel? This year we have found it so many times. 
We found yeah. that a week ago in, in Wells Mills at the base of a pine tree and before in Estelle Manor and before somewhere else, I can't remember. We have found it a few times. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Tom Bigelow identified as an onia tomentosa. Okay. Tomentosa means the aspect of the tap. The hairy. Yeah, hair. the, yeah the hairy, mm -hmm. that wooliness. Tomentos. Tomentos, right, hairy. All right, cool. The next one was, here, I'll do the Sectarius first. These were pretty young, pretty small lactarius. Um, they were underneath of a white pine, but there was a lot of oak around too. And um, they definitely had they have white latex and they were really just kind of mildly acrid. Um, I tried keying key them out at the foray. The best I could come up with was, was um, the Fiji Galus, but I wasn't really convinced of that. It kind of fits, but does it ring a bell to anyone? Like Harry's Fiji Galus? What's the spelling on that one, Luke? The... Um, T H E J. Oh, Theo, Theo Jalius. Yeah, okay. Um... That one, this looks pretty smooth and yeah, shiny. it was smooth for that one. Yeah, I mean, what I think of that species, it's like oak thing that feel feel Jalius, feel Jalius. Uh, yeah, it was definitely smooth. Yeah, oh, I put the Lactarius book away. I had it here and I put it away. Um, Lactarius is pretty much finished around here. Um, hmm. hmm. The the um in intern margin on this uh see the margins are like really They're right there. Really, yeah, yeah. Interned. What do they call that? There's there's another word for that. Enrolled. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Um. I'm not sure that's a Theogallius type thing. Okay. Yeah, you might want to check check against that trait. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then the last one. Now I did not look or confirm this at all. This is completely an Igor um, um, identification, but he was quite positive that he was calling this Amanita takes land nensis. After Jake's Landing, he was, he actually went to Jake's Landing to find this. Um, so Jake's Land Denensis. So he says it's a you know it's a Rod Tullos thing. Rod Tullos named it after that, and this was the only one he could find, and it was in really poor condition, and it had already broken off at the ground. He actually found it laying on the side of the ground, you know, turned over. So he didn't break it off like that. Yeah, it's a section vaginate species. Mm -hmm. Even though you know we can't see the base of the stipe, there's no ring, but the the um, long striations on the cap. Yeah, so that's why I, it, that's why I put it in here as yeah, as vaginate it. or you know cesarea also, but I don't. I there's no. I can't think of any cesarea that looks like that. Yeah. So here's the ID tag, if you guys want to see the name. Um, of course, iNaturalist doesn't have this name in there, so. But that's Jake's Landonensis, based on a Tullos. Yep, Jake's Land. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that name before. <laughs> yeah. So, kind, kind of neat. <laughs> that, one's, that one's on Mushroom Observer in a few. There's a few observations for that. You can yeah. find, you can, if you search it on Mushroom Observer, you'll find a few. Okay. I'll probably put this on Mushroom Observer, even though it's not the greatest collection, but. I put it on iNaturalist when I'm in a hurry because I can do it on my phone quickly. <laughs> right. For tonight. <laughs> and then when I have more time, I sit down and mess with Mushroom Observer. Okay, that was it for me. So, why the? Oh, I'll stop sharing, of course. And if um, we have plenty of time tonight, so if there's anybody else, I think I've now called on everyone that 
um, put their name in the chat. Okay. All right, I'll give it a shot here. All right, we'll start with this uh, Nevo Flavilus since we were just talking about that with Dave's. So I've just found this today, this afternoon probably, or late morning, and uh, pretty big. This one I've turned over was probably three or four inches across. Um, and you can see very, uh, very scaly. So, um, I think, I think this might be uh, Avalaris. Yeah, that's what I'll call yeah. it. Looks like it to me. Orange and scaly. Yeah, very orange. Did you have a lot of rain there at least recently? Yes, we have had a couple, two to three inches probably in the last week. So. Yeah, that's probably what triggered some of these things. Yeah. Is the stipe, the, this part here seems to be white. Is that sometimes black or is that mm, age no. dependent? Never. It's never black? No, never. Okay, all right. So on some of those other polypores in the like polyporous, they have similar looking um, pores on them. They're the ones with the black stipes. Okay, okay. Maybe, maybe a few others too, but I think that's probably what you're thinking of. Yeah, probably. So, um, yeah, it's just the same. So there was that. So they're out there. Um, that was the first time I found like a whole bunch of them right on one stick. Usually it's scattered one or two here or there, but this was a quite a grouping. Um, all right, let's look at this one. This was, was kind of fun. This surprised me. I've never found one of these calistomas. I'm not sure which, which one it is. Um, but it seemed like it had, uh, you know, this, was, this was well after the rain. It was like the day after the two days of nonstop rain that we got. It looks like so, Cinabarina. They yeah. It looks like it's been out for a few days and faded. Yeah, there's yeah. The young ones. Yeah, the, I, it's the, uh, the the red on it that makes it cinnabarina. Is that correct? I, I think so. Yeah, I, I I'd have to check. Yeah, it has like a mouth with a red intense red coloring, and it also peels off these reddish scales that you can see scattered around it. You can see, oh, in the other one. There is a yellow form though, but I, I think that isn't what this the, is. the yellow form has a very long uh, spongy stipe like. Yeah, and it also it also has a little a little color around where at the base of that, uh, the big circle there, the big wall, is kind of a little color on the yellow one, which this one does not have. Oh, that, uh, you mean like on the bottom of the beak? Yes. Uh, no, yeah. at the bottom. Yeah, there, yeah right? there's something yeah. about the beak. I, I, yeah, you're probably beak nailing it there. Yeah. What is this stuff that's kind of off this gelatinous stuff? Was that what was it, covering it, it originally? It's young ones. No, oh, it's no. Young ones. No, no. It's a layer. It's a gelatinous layer that covers the initial ball and then it peels off. Okay. That's, that's what I thought, but I wasn't sure. Yeah, so. yeah, those are definitely young ones. We used to find that years ago in Meadow Woods all along the riverbank there. Yeah, but Jeb says his students call it alien poop. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. So it was very um, cordy. I broke one off. I didn't, I didn't take a picture. I should have, but the 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 stem or the stalk that it was on was was quite tough and um, like a whole bunch of threads, 20, 30, 40, I don't know. There was a lot of um, like stiff brown 
thready, cordy things. It's interesting. It almost looks like a, a morel surface. True. Yeah, the you design, could. Yeah. You could imagine that a little bit. Yep. Yeah. So I was all excited because I've seen seen this in the in various books and I've never found one. So it's just. It, it's it's mycorrhizal. It is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, this was um, oak, mostly oak, but there were other hardwoods, um, red oaks and uh, black oak, a lot of black, black oak around. All right, so people thought that was the, likely the cinnabarinum? Mm hmm Okay. Thank you. Uh, let's see what else. Um, this was uh, quite large. I'd say that was probably four or five inches across. And um, just this one, one branch that had this uh, clump of this on it, well, kind of two clumps, an, an older specimen and then this newer I don't think that is foliacea. Foliacea looks like a brownish lettuce. Okay. There is another name, but I cannot remember. And I remember I have found foliacea and is yeah, it looks like a lettuce. Brownish lettuce. Yeah. Is it the name that's on here says Feo Tremella? They change it, yeah. But yeah, foliacea, I remember. I they just changed the yeah. They added the file. Mm -hmm. There is another one, but I just can't remember the name. All right, so you don't think it's this then, Marilyn? Reticulata. No idea. Trimula reticulata or reticula something. Wait, let me see. Maybe it's in here. But that one's white, I think. White translucent. The one I the one I just mentioned. Yeah, this was definitely wasn't white. It was kind of this golden golden color with the older okay. one. Okay. It's documented in here. I've got Baroni's book right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. is probably as the spores up. mature. Tremula. No, it's not. It's not Tremula reticulata, which is now Sevacina. Could it be Aurantia? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Say it again, John. Aurantia, A U R A N T I A. Aurantia grows next to Stereum species, okay. which it parasitizes, and it's like deep yellow. Yeah, yellow, orange. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not exidia, is it? No, no exidia. Yeah, it's not dark enough for exidia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seemed too big for that, too. It was pretty large. Hmm. I don't know. I'm looking through pictures. I can't see anything that's... I have seen it in, in a book and it also has a relationship with, it parasitizes something. But I just, I don't have the information. Hmm. Yeah, I don't, I, yeah, I don't, I didn't take a picture of the whole, it was a, a limb that was up off the ground that had come down some time ago. And compare pictures with the name that you have and you'll see that it looks different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Didn't seem like there was anything else that I could see in mm. the in the in the branch growing. So that is a great picture, by the way. Thank you. Mm -hmm. really another, yeah, real nice picture. And if it is parasitizing something, the fruit bodies of the thing it's parasitizing might not be evident. It might just be parasitizing the the um, mycelium that's oh, yeah. in the substrate. Mm -hmm. okay. 
So there is another one called Frondosa that looks pretty close to Foliaceae. <laughs> I don't know, there's an article on um in mushroomexpert.com on that you might want to look at. It's too complicated for me to absorb while we're talking, but Frondosa? Yeah, Feotramella frondosa. That might give you a lead somewhere. Okay. Because he's All also right. talking about some other closely related ones in that article. All right, I'll try to look into that some more then. Thank you. And then, uh, let's see, looks like somebody's, uh, I don't think this, I don't think this is a <clears throat> resinosis, resinosum. But maybe it is. Uh, yeah, and I think it is. You're just not seeing the top, or maybe it's been out there a while. Yeah, it looks like res res resin. What is it? Resinosum. Resinosum. Does it? Yeah. Do, I don't see it with this big thing underneath the cap that goes down like that. Does it? Um, Res it. Can do that. The way it hugs the log. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there it is. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But how do you make the difference with the other species? There are two that are very close. How do you know which one is which? Oh, yeah, that's is, a good question. Benzonium, benzonium. This and one's more common. <laughs> yeah. isn't, that a, isn't that a substrate thing? Isn't benzonium only, only supposed to be on conifer? Oh, that I don't know. But I, in the mushroom expert, he, he'll tell you that. They're I, very close. Yeah, I think I think hmm? it might be a substrate thing. Oh, I don't know about that. Okay, I, I'll learn. I'll learn. I think you're right, Luke. I think that's right. That one of these things it grows on conifers, and one grows on hardwood. And the other one, the other, I think the other one. All right. Well, this was definitely on a on an old book. You, uh, Marissa, you identified that benz. I can't remember the name. Benzonium. Benzonium or resinosum. Yeah. You identified that one time down at um. The Forest Resource Center. Do you remember how you came to that? No, no, I don't. <laughs> I'm looking in, in Rivarden's book about the difference between the two. Um, it is in the Mushroom Expert, but I can access now. Actually, Ishnoderma. Ishnoderma. Okay, 212. 212. It must have been an older. Uh, set of species because about a week or so ago I gathered a bunch that was fresh mm -hmm. and it just it, it um, was quite different. Okay, he has the two here. Let me see what he says. Uh, Benzonium grows on conifers, very rare on hardwoods as fagus and prunus. In North America, also recorded from Pseudosuga and Tuha, I don't know how to say that. And let's see, when so, um, Ichnoderma resinosum grows on hardwoods, especially fagus, but also now from Betula and Tilia. Birch and, and Tilia, I don't know what's Tilia. Um, oh, uh, so it says here that resinosum change into the hard from toy phase from October to early winter. Thus, later than for Ischnoderma benzonium. The status of the species in North America is unclear, uh, as isolates both from conifer trees and hardwoods are infertile. Now they say that DNA is necessary to clarify the situation. So the sustratum is not really defined, doesn't really define the species. I mean, what 100%. Oh, no, no, because I'm so sorry, forgive me, I am wrong. So, resinosum doesn't grow on, on conifers. Benzonium does, but it also grows on hardwood. Mm -hmm. No, no clue, that's all I can tell you. Okay. Yeah, it's in the mountains. So, what, what wood was your, what kind of tree was your wood? Oak. 
Oh, in on oak. Yeah, on oak. Yeah. I said you could be right there, but no, no, listen to me. All right. Um, look at this. I think this is a sterium. Uh, I don't think this was what you found that that bruised uh, or bled red. This one looks complicated. Yeah, I think this is complicated. Yeah, complicated. Yeah, was quite small, really small. Yeah, really? a bunch of small ones. Complicated. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's kind of what I was leaning towards. Uh, it was it was gorgeous. I love finding things right after the rain stops when they're all mm -hmm. wet. They're coming. When, yeah, when these right after the rain, these are really striking, and then they fade, and you can hardly notice them sometimes. But right after rain, they look really nice. Yeah, yeah, that's gorgeous. All right, so complicate them. Thank you. And. I don't know, maybe somebody knows what this is. This was tiny. I would say these are one millimeter, two, two millimeters, probably the big ones across, very tiny um, green. It would be chromelosporium chlora. Chlora. I don't know if it has an H. Let me, let me try to spell it. C-H-L, chlora. Maybe, maybe something like that. Okay. Yeah, just this one, one rotted log covered, kind of covered in this. <laughs> okay. And then I found one of these and I ate it. <laughs> How big it was? Uh, not terribly big. I, 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 I've sent, it was the first time that I actually um, did eat it. So I took like the, this, this bottom half of uh, it, which was a little bit smaller than my fist, maybe. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was pretty nice. Mm. Just in a damaged, uh, I think this might have been a maple tree. Um, so it looked like it was coming out of a, an old wound that had been in the tree before mm -hmm. it fell, maybe. So that was a nice, uh, nice little find. You know what's interesting? I, I think it's kind of interesting. I live in Philadelphia, and um, I rarely, if ever, see this species here. But I find the other one, the Aranaceum, is that mm -hmm. Aranaceum aranaceus? you know, the rounder one, yeah. I find that all the time. And then just the other day I was looking on, I was looking on Dave's mushroom observer page and I noticed up by him, he's like up in the, I don't know, where do you live? Northeast Pennsylvania, <coughs> Dave. You have tons of the observations of this one and only like one or two of the, um, the other one, the Aranaceus. What's the name for this one? I'm sorry. Americanum or Americanus. Americanum. Yeah, it's just the different microclimates or environments, I guess, they prefer. I've seen it a couple other times over the last couple of years, but I don't see it very often. Here in the Adirondacks, we find the third one more commonly with the little spines all down the uh, the uh, little branches. Iratum? Coloides. Coloides. Coloides, yeah. Okay. Huh. Susan, where in the Adirondacks are you, roughly? I'm near Lake Placid and Saranac Lake. Okay. All right. Way up. Yeah, yeah. Seven inches of snow oh, today. Oh, wow. What? No. That was a that was a swing state. Wow. <laughs> All right, I, that's that's plenty. I'll stop so somebody else can go. All right, thanks, uh, Thank so you. A lot of transplants there from up north. It's not a All great. Right. Um, Kay, you wanted to share something. 
Uh, yeah, Luke, can you go into my iNet? Because I always end up just knocking myself off. Yeah. Can you guys you guys see my iNet? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just sharing correctly? Okay. So let's see here. Search community people. It's Case Burlock. I saw this really beautiful thing. It was it, it was uh, on Saturday, I guess, right after the rains had come in the Bronx. And it should be just one of the top. Uh, uh, let's wait, see. Wait a minute. I got to turn this filter off. Yeah. Yeah, that one, the top one. I didn't put any name on it. And I... I put I put it to the New York people and nobody had a clue, but it was this this beautiful muted, like um, marbled sort of pink yellow orange color. They were very striking, about two three inches two two inches or so, a few of them, and it was it was just so pretty. I wanted to know what it was. <laughs> All right, so I tell her what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Any ideas? What was the substrate? Log. Might be tubaria. It's kind of big and hefty. Uh, that's not tubaria, then. Those are small. Um, wow. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was at one. least two and, two, two and a half inches. Yeah, it's big for Tubaria. I found something oh, the print, like that. print is dark for Tubaria, too. That print mm -hmm. is too dark. It could I'm be sorry, Marisol, what, what were you saying? Yeah, I found one that looks like that. Is, mine was, the DNA was done for it, and the name came up as Ginopus uh, Underwoodi. Uh, Underwoodi, but, but Ginopus may be good enough. Gym, Gymnopolis, you mean. Gymnopolis. Oh, 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 I'm so sorry. Or Gymnopus, there's both. Gymnopus is white spored or oh, okay. pale, very oh, pale. Oh, okay. Gymnopolis yes. is orange or rusty yes. spored. Yes. These are not rusty, though. Yep. These spores are not rusty. Maybe a hypholoma. Oh. Maybe some kind of hypholoma. Or this one, hypholoma, Dave, you think? Yeah, well, the spores, oh, oh. Uh, spore print suggests hypholoma. that. Hypholoma. Okay. The, because spore, the spore print suggests that. Gymnopolis has rusty spores. Rusty orange, rusty brown. Oh, this one is not rusty. Okay. Yeah. You're right. Hmm. Well, gee, I, I love the gill structure on that bigger one. It was uh, pretty. <laughs> yeah, this is a tricky one. Did you put this on Mushroom Observer or any place like no, that? No, I don't, I don't use Mushroom Observer. I haven't advanced to that. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to. You could just join and put stuff on. And if you don't have any idea what it is, just call it a Garicales. Yeah, that's what I should have done instead of just fungi. Yeah, put it on there. You might get some opinions. But you have um, to know how to use Mushroom Observer. Yeah, I don't. Well, it's it's not that hard to learn, really. You just join, and um, you create. It's easy to create an observation, really. Hey, Dave, do a workshop, huh? A workshop. I mean, I mean, I'll, I use uh, both of them. Yeah, I could probably do that. I use both of them, and I would say either one. If you can do iNaturalist, she can do Mushroom Reserver. This is an MO takes longer. This is a more. This is, this is really a pretty cool one, though. You know, I the gills don't look like hypholoma to me, but the spore print does. And um, can you show wow. the spore print they, again, please? They were okay. Yeah, it's not really, really dark. Yep. Very dark. Pretty dark, but I think the color doesn't come through. It was a little more orange. Uh, than you know what? what? You know what? Up. The print is taken on paper that's absorbent, and it yeah. has sucked moisture out of the mushroom, and that changes the way the print looks. So I'm not yeah, sure we can, very really wet. Trust, we can really trust the what the color looks like. It may have been altered by the moisture coming out of the mushroom. Mm -hmm. That 
export print is gorgeous. Oh, they are, I'm going to keep that. them. They are pretty. <laughs> oh, look at the space between the gills and the... Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Thank you. Almost looks like you're looking at the, the gill surface itself. It's ah. really <laughs> high resolution spore print there. Mm -hmm. Well, anything else, Kay, for you have Um Well, I was interested a, a, a while back, we found these green amanitas that turned out to be uh, death caps right on the trail in Pelham Bay. I was kind of surprised, a whole lot of them. Um, that was probably a week ago. Um, what's what's the name of uh, Death Cap? Um, Amanita. The Hoyades. You have pictures of that. That would yeah. be interesting. Amanita yeah, somewhere. somewhere. Um, it was in Pelham Bay. So if you go back, I don't remember. I've been going out every day. It's been it's been good. There's Pelham Bay. Okay, so it's in these. They're uh, not the color. There, Phylloides. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, definitely looks like Phylloides. I actually find Phylloides not every year. Last year I found it on my property under native white pine, old growth. Yeah. That's very unusual. Wow. Usually in the east, you find it in, under like transplanted ornamental stuff, pines and uh, mixed with oaks, maybe. I found it in three different places so far here in northeast PA. But the other two places are just planted ornamentals along roads. But I find it on my property, and I'm pretty darn sure I, I did it correctly, in native, under native white pine, nothing else nearby that... Mm would qualify as, as a, a, an associate for this. But that's, yeah, that's Philaides. Look at that greenish cap, the cup, cup-like vulva that's sheathing a little bit, but then when you pick it, sometimes it breaks apart. Yeah, that's, it's got the ring. Yeah, that's, that's Philaides. I'd bet on it. John? John and Nina? Yeah. Do we find this one a lot in the Pine Barrens? No. no. We don't. No, oh. this one, this one is uh, one that Rod Tullis identified at uh, Jake's Landing oh. a long time ago. Oh, okay. And and uh, he he established pretty well that it was in fact. I mean, there was always doubt about whether it was in North America. Mm. And, uh, yeah, I I submitted some Philaides to Rod, and he sent it on to Karen Hughes, uh -huh. and she verified that what I had submitted was was Philaides. He said it was the first documented collection in Pennsylvania, although huh. John Plischke had collected, you know, what is probably Philaides, you know, years, years before that in Pennsylvania. My, my collection that was verified through Rod and, and Karen Hughes um, was found um, near a busy roadway in Wilkes-Barre, with planted some sort of planted two or three needle pine with some oaks that were also planted, ornamental trees. This the Jake's Landing is a, a part of uh, Belle Plaine State Park. So this is from Kate. Oh. The, the one uh, Rod originally found was from uh, you know Cape May County. So this is actually not common. No, no it's an invasive species from Europe. Oh, oh, yeah, but the, oh, yeah, the, but the reason jumped. why the one that I found on my property is so interesting, it's under old growth white pine, hmm. which is native. So that but me, it's jumped you know, hosts. It, it probably has it probably you know what I think maybe what happened was since I've been bringing some of these home during the past maybe eight years, maybe it maybe some spores got out of my house and got quickly established. I, I mean, that seems pretty fast for a mycorrhiza. I, I think that's very possible, I think. Excuse me, the, the one before then, did it have decurrent gills? No. Okay, it's the, or, that, that orangey thing before this one. Uh, did that have... Oh, uh, 
I don't think so. No, it wasn't. It wasn't def. It no. It had. I can't tell you if it was free or attached, but it no, wasn't the different. Problem. No, that one. Did it have? It, it, I was thinking Pro Gumpus, but. Uh, but no. it's no, it's not no, the it's current. Not no, it's not the current. Okay. Yeah. It had just such a beautiful cap, and there were a few of them, and they were so striking. I'd never seen anything this mottled, like orange, yellow, pink thing. It was beautiful. Oh, um, hey, you know what? I have an idea here. Um, can I see that cap again? Um, yeah, the the colors doesn't don't come through on my photos, unfortunately. They it were on, it was real striking. Is it on wood or on wood yeah, was, on the ground with woody stuff? No, I think it was on a, a downed log. Oh, yeah. I, I'm I'm remembering that it was on a downed log. I could be wrong, but I think that's how it was. Yeah, I, I, I was going to suggest an idea, but I'm not going to because I know it's wrong. So, <laughs> um, interesting. That's a that's a good one. Okay. Uh, do you ever do you ever go on Facebook on like some of the big fungus ID groups? No. Because there's some good identifiers. You have to like sift through all the noise and nonsense on there, but yeah, there's, some, <laughs> there's there's some really good identifiers on um you know, some of these mushroom Facebook pages, like Maricel will tell you, right? Mm -hmm. So. I trust Maricel. <laughs> but you have to know how to use those things. Oh, yeah, you're right, you do. <laughs> Just like you have to know how to use a key, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, anything Thanks else, Kay? Looking. Would you like to look at anything else, Kay? Uh, I don't think so. I just been seeing the same old bluets. So oh. many bluets, beautiful, okay. gorgeous can we, bluets. Can we look at this because I don't know this mushroom. Oh, this one. Okay, this one. I I had questioned the New York Club because I didn't know what it was. It was uh, fruiting around an oak. All these big, beautiful. They looked. You know, like a blue, it looks like a clytosabe to me. I mean, just the shape of it and stuff. And they were all around just beautiful white and robust. And so everybody seemed to think that robusta was the way to go. Yeah, clytosabe robusta. If you get a really thick spore print, you can, you can see that it's pale yellow. Yeah, Not that's white. that's what Paul was saying, a yellow, but unfortunately I didn't collect any of it. Yeah, it's probably it smells funny too. If you smell it, it smells kind of weird. Like it's oh, hard to you describe know the funny the thing about this guy, I went well, I don't remember an odd smell, but I went to take a taste of it and it peeled. It peeled like a rustula. And that surprised me so much I think I forgot to taste it. <laughs> I actually had this. I had this today. It smelled like anisette and almonds, actually. I don't smell, know. Smell like what? Anisette and almonds a bit. Uh, okay. Growing in a, growing in leaf litter on the ground. Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, sometimes they're in leaf litter and sometimes they're in needle conifer litter. They usually grow in arcs. Like it looks like this is a little bit of an arc here. Yeah, it sure does. Yeah. It's you all know, around the tree. It yeah, caught my there's... attention because on Friday night Tom Bigelow said that they were eating these. Oh, oh. they're terrible. Are oh they? god, I ate them once. They're terrible. But well, I mean, that's my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> you seem to think they were interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they were terrible. Okay, okay. But I don't know. Maybe that maybe it varies, you know. <laughs> Yeah. I thought the ones I ate were under conifers. Ah, uh, different. A long time ago. They taste I different. I actually <laughs> ate them because I misidentified them as Lapista irina a long, <laughs> long time ago, like 35 years ago or something. Now, I had to throw out like a perfectly good, uh, otherwise perfectly good meal, you know, because they were, I put them in and they were terrible. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, thanks, Kay. Thank you.
Okay. Does anybody else have anything they want to share? I think that was the end of the end of the list. What time is it? Eight forty-five. Uh, can I show my my genopilos uh, under woody? Yeah, sure. All right. Oops. I can't find it. <laughs> Let's see four. Before that. Is there a way in iNaturalist just to look at a list and alphabetize it? Ah, how can I? Ah, I'm maybe. Just... Okay, let's see. No, you said Ginopilus? It's with the rusty. Um... Oh, yeah, I found it. Ginopilus under Woody. Okay. Ha! Huh, my observation. Oh, I never heard of this one. That's a good one. Okay. Wood... What is it? Under Woody Eye. Yeah. Wow. I've right. never heard of that one. All right, so it grows on deciduous wood. It's, I have seen it for 40 years in the same little area, but it changed. The first place the wood is gone, so now it finds another substratum. And it's kind of orange red. Okay, there's a baby. Uh, this one is not that orange red. Okay, you can see there. Oh, I put KOH on and it reacted like this wine color. This cap was a little old. But this is the real color when it's brand new. This deep orange reddish. These ones were not too good, but the other observations that I have are way too old. I can't, I can't find them. I, I, I probably didn't post them, but it's in the same spot. And the, oh yeah, I put the sport print, yes. Look at the color of the sport print. It's yeah, orange. Like yeah. Orange. Mm -hmm. Rusty reddish orange, yeah. How'd you identify this, Marcel? I didn't. Um, it, the DNA was made by Maria, one teacher from one university that was coming to Alarva for Ace. Uh, yeah, yep. But when I compare, I went online and there is not too much information. What they say doesn't match. <laughs> huh. yeah, so I never I heard know. of this species. Hmm? I never heard of this species. Yeah, there are many Ginopilus. Yep. Oh, there's a lot. Of, yeah, there's a bunch of them. Certainly yeah. looks like Gymnopolis spores that you've drawn there. Yeah. Oh, by the way, last week I said that um, um, gallerina spores look like mangoes, according to Alan Rockefeller, but it's actually Gymnopolis spores that look like mangoes. Oh. Alan Rockefeller. And this oh, drawing okay. reminds me of <laughs> making this correction because they look like mangoes, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So here are the spores. Uh, they have like a dark, I don't know if this is called a thick wall or dark, I don't, I don't really know. And you can see like the inside of the, the spore, the nucleus, whatever name there is. Deposit rusty brown, avoid to be shape to one straight side. So I did drawings of a few of them to show you from different angles. Yep. That's all. All right. All right. Thanks, Marcel. Mm -hmm. All right. Anybody else? About 10 minutes left. Look, how longer are we going to have this uh, Tuesday? Well, I don't know. I don't know. I, I was wondering that myself. I mean, as long as we keep finding mushrooms. But then over the winter, I think we should still meet. Maybe not every week, um, uh, but I feel like we should still meet and do yeah. taxonomy stuff. Yeah, and we can like prepare little presentations or even show old mushrooms. Yeah, 
because you can come back to all things that you identify like two years later, then you know, I, this is the one that I found, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Right. So if people want to do that, yeah. Yeah. There's Plus we, I mean, we know that over the winter we'll keep finding some stuff, not a lot, but, and some people are more, you know, they, they dig deep in the winter and find some really interesting, interesting yeah. interesting. Yeah. I never, yeah, I'm sorry. I never stop going to the woods. I go every weekend. So, because not too many mushrooms are going to grow these days. Like you will find um, this one with the hairy, the velvety foot. What's the name? Flamulina velutipes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll find that one, and then you may find um, some polypores. But now you find a lot of the crusts. Cross, you have to yeah. turn the logs to find them. So I always find stuff in in the in the winter. It would be interesting if several people picked out five or six of the most interesting things they found this season. Or oh yeah, make a little presentation. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. What, what was special about that mushroom mm -hmm. that you found? And if you have a good picture of it, I would like to see that. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, well, if anybody has um, other good ideas too, send them to me. Email me or however mm -hmm. you want to get the information to me. Yeah, because I feel like we should definitely keep going. All right. right. I have, um, I made a press, a little, I prepared some papers about the, um, heterotrophic, I may have said it wrong, mycoheterotrophic plants like Monotropa uniflora that um, gets the nutrients from a um, grusula. And uh, I studied some material and I collected the information about what, uh, which of these plants happens in the US and which ones happen outside the US. So I can do a little presentation about that if people are interested. Because as I said in that little paper, they keep coming to our tables because people don't know exactly what they are. Hmm. Because they confuse you, the right. way they color, the way they look and their colors. Hmm. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right, well, sounds good. Anybody else have anything they wanna drop in there before we go? Um, just don't forget everyone, um, there's a, pop-up lecture this Sunday um, mm -hmm. coming up 2 p.m. Dr. Lynn Body. Somebody mentioned, I think they said that she's in Wales, which is why it's at a weird time, two o'clock in the afternoon. I think somebody oh. mentioned that in the chat earlier. I think I saw that come up. So okay. anyway, the, you do have to register for that though. Okay. So I sent that link out um, last night and you do have to register. So remember me. I'll do it right now. Please. <laughs> Thank Thanks. you. Well, then let's say good night, everyone. And uh, we'll good see you next week. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Bye.